All right, welcome everybody. Nice to see you, nice to share with you. We're live here on Instagram both and YouTube as well. And today we're gonna be talking about alignment and does it really matter? So alignment is something that a lot of people regard as super important. And I wanna welcome you all in as you're coming in, say hello, give me a wave. Thank you for being here, whether you're on YouTube or you're on Instagram, or if you're watching this later on my website, um, nice to have you here. I'm gonna be looking back and forth between the two phones, so if my eyes look a little bit crazy, it's because I'm going back and forth between the two cameras. Uh, we're gonna be talking about this question, is alignment important? Does it really matter? This is something that a lot of people ask me, um, and are you the kind, of, the first question I have for you is are you the kind of person that loves alignment or hates it? We usually have one or the other. You avoid alignment altogether because you wanna feel the flow, the rhythm, the movement, the gracefulness, um, and that's something that you really honor about the yoga practice. And the other side is um, you really like alignment because it makes you feel safe, steady, it feels better in your body, um, you feel like perhaps it's a better approach to the yoga practice. So whichever side you're on, I'd love to see it in the comments below. Please share if you hate alignment, love alignment, um, and you know anything in between, explain and be happy to read that later and, and see what you've got. Uh, throw it in the comments below. And nice to see you all. Thank you for tuning in. So before we get started on this question, what is, you know, does alignment really matter? And it's gonna surprise you the answer that I give you. I'm sure you're not gonna uh, necessarily see this one coming. Um, however, that said, it's a couple of quick announcements. I have uh, three things coming up for the month of February. If you're watching this live, these announcements are important. We have the February immersion. It's gonna be called the dance, and that's gonna be the transitions between uh, postures, whereas a lot of my immersions focus on the uh, micro actions and movements within the posture. So this is about graceful movement between the postures, um, and I'd love for, it, for you to be there. It's not on sale yet if you're watching this live. If you're watching this after, then it probably is for sale on theyogimat.com slash live. Okay, the other two really important things, February 1st, um, we have the uh, the start of the 200 hour online teacher training and February 14th is if you want to become 500 hour certified, there is a 300 hour uh, certification process. So just to quickly clear, clarify that before we get into the conversation about alignment and whether it matters, a lot of people are confused. You start with 200, 300. If you are not a certified yoga teacher, start with a 200 hour teacher training that gives you the foundations to help you learn how to teach, gives you the techniques, the sequencing, builds confidence. It's a step-by-step -step approach to learning how to teach a yoga class. Now, if you are um, already a yoga teacher and you're 200 hour certified and you wanna take your teaching to the master level, then you do the 300 hour training. What's up Bryce Larson, nice to see you. Um, but you do the 300 hour training and the 300 hour training brings your certification up to the 500 hour level. Okay, so now that all being said, let's get into the question about alignment. Um, if you're interested in the 200 hour that starts on the first, send me a direct message on Instagram or email me, the Yogi Matt. that's two T's in my name, T-H-E-Y-O-G-I-M-A-T-T at gmail.com and we'll discuss. If you're interested in a 300 hour training that starts February 14th, send me a message and we'll discuss if it's the appropriate thing for you. I'm not really into pushing people into something that's not right for them. So just send me a message and we'll talk. All right, so now the commercials breaks out of the way, let's get into it. So like really what is alignment and does it matter? This is the question. Um, a lot of people see alignment as um, the correct way of doing a yoga posture, okay? Now, I want to just clarify that a lot of alignment details have come from um, aesthetics, meaning uh, BKS Iyengar, one of the big, uh, biggest influences in alignment, I would say, came to the U.S., and he created a book called Light on Yoga with a lot of yoga photos. And when he was taking those photos, my understanding is that he saw visually the difference um, in some of his postures and decided to change them because of what he saw. So that was an external image, what he saw that caused him to change the alignments of things. Now, when we talk about align, uh, alignment, a lot of times we're talking about um, the visual out external look of a posture and most of the time a yoga teacher is looking at that external look and then correcting based on that. Now that the biggest downfall of that is that 
what something looks like on the outside may or may not be a reflection of what is going on inside the joints. Now, alignment should be, in my personal opinion, and I imagine anybody who really studies anatomy, alignment should be uh, a reflection or a connection to the internal um, integration of your bones as they line up with one another, which is what we call the joints. So where the bones line up, where they connect, we have um, something called ligaments that surround the connection point. So you can imagine, you know, you've got your femur bone, which is your thigh bone. It has like a ball at the end of it, and it sits inside of something called the ilium, which is the pelvic socket. And what keeps the bone from falling out are these ligaments, this um, tissue that is non-elastic tissue that holds the bone in place. And then that what surrounds that is musculature, muscle that is also um, attaching to bone. So we call those um, not ligaments. Ligaments are bone to bone, whereas tendons are where a muscle connects to a bone. So a muscle is very, um, the difference between a muscle and tendon um, is, well, uh, sorry, the difference between a muscle and a ligament, a muscle has elasticity to it. Um, much greater elasticity and has the ability to contract actively, whereas a ligament it just holds things in place. Think of a ligament as like a rope and a muscle slash tendon as more of like a bungee cord. It has a muscle has this elasticity where when you stretch it out, hopefully it recoils back inward. Okay, so we've got muscle that attaches to tendons. And we have, uh, and, and all that is basically a muscle attaching to a tendon is a tendon is simply a muscle. At the end of the muscle, it attaches to a bone. We call that a tendon, okay? A ligament, on the other hand, has no muscle tissue in it. So hello and welcome in everybody. The question we are answering today is, what is alignment and uh, is it important? Is it really important? So the way that, a lot of yoga teachers define alignment is really a way of the correct way of doing a yoga posture. And I want to shatter that completely and say that that's uh, just, it's something that I, I, I see the value in it, that there's a right and a wrong way of doing something. However, it's so, um, it's so false in so many levels. Sometimes it is correct. I would say, but a lot of times it's not. There's no hard and fast rules in life, in nature. There are only spectrums of understanding. If we can really get our minds wrapped around that, then we can start to go to work on this idea of what's called discernment, understanding what is good for me uh, at any given time, given the circumstances, okay? So this is an important, uh, perhaps maybe the most important thing a yogi could do is develop discernment, understanding what is important for them, what is valuable, what is uh, effective, what is good. That doesn't mean that what is good for me is good for you. So an alignment of a posture the way that I do it may be perfect for me, maybe amazing, maybe healing. It may uh, really help me in a big way, but for you, it may damage your body. And this is how we need to look at things, in my opinion, is we need to see things as flexible rather than a rigid structure to say that there's a correct and an incorrect alignment. So when answering what is alignment and does it really matter, it's a tricky question. Alignment is how our bones line up. Okay, and does it really matter? Yes, it absolutely matters, but it depends on what your definition of alignment is. Are you, is your definition correct and incorrect based on an aesthetic, like a visual of seeing a shape, like this is called triangle pose, so, so we should make equilateral triangles. Well, that's not how our bone structure works. It's not based on a false sense of like visual shapes that we can see from the outside. It has to do with how our bones line up with one another, how our ligaments are dealing with that alignment, and how our muscles are behaving and reacting in accordance to that alignment. So we all have muscular patterns. And this is really the heart of the matter that I want to discuss with you today. Muscular patterns are essentially um, like anything else, we have patterned behaviors in our, you know, so we're, we get a certain reaction when a certain person walks in the room, we get an emotional pattern based on that, like your mother, your father, there's, you know, then a certain set of thoughts or emotions or behaviors follow that circumstance, okay? So we have patterns in our muscular system as well, based on emotion, thought, but also based on physical environment. 
So when you get placed in a certain posture, then your muscles behave in a certain way that may or may not serve you. And adjusting the alignment of a yoga pose could be something highly beneficial to balancing out your current patterns. I'm gonna say that again. So aligning yourself a certain way, aligning your bones a certain way can cause muscles to behave and react in a way that's balancing and in that way, alignment can be very powerful, empowering, it could be healing and it could be amazing and very important for you. The opposite could also be true. I could come in and say, this is the correct way of holding your of holding this shape. This is how warrior two should be done, right? I can come in and say that. And based on your physical patterns, it may be completely false. It might be the exact wrong way to do it for your specific body, okay? Because what matters is your muscles, muscular system and the patterns that exist within it. So we all have um, uh, muscle tension, tightness, we all have muscle strength, capacity to engage a muscle. We also have the elasticity of our muscle. And also we have fascia, which encases all the muscles that have their own patterns, right? So there's a lot of patterning that goes on in our body. And usually, usually, I'm gonna put this as a general rule of thumb that can be broken, but usually what causes the muscular system to find greater health is this doing the opposite of everything that we do all the time. So we, how do we create health in the muscular system? Step one, we assess what our patterns are. Now this is why asana practice is huge or any other practice where you develop self-awareness, whether it's of the physical body, the mind or anything else. When you develop self-awareness, you can start with step one, which assesses what our patterns are. Then once you understand what your pattern is, you can make a decision to make a change to develop uh, your, a new pattern, to balance out what is. And that's the second step, balance out what is. So step one, assess what your pattern is. Thank you for the thumbs up. Thank you for the hearts, everybody. I appreciate it. And over here on YouTube, thank you for the comments. Um, I'm hoping you're enjoying this conversation about what is alignment, is it important, uh, and, and and all things around that. So just a brief recap, alignment is how your bones line up in the joints, okay? And then we've got muscles and ligaments that surround the joints that keep the bones aligned properly or not. And step one to creating um, alignment that works for your body is to assess your patterns, predominantly muscular patterns first, because muscles are adaptable, they're changeable. Uh, you can create new patterns of musculature very easily and that muscle engagement pattern that you create, the muscles are like a pulley system so they can change how the bones align in the sockets. A lot of times, if you've got a bone that's kind of like pushing up against a joint, like rubbing up against another bone, causing soft tissue impingement. Uh, oh, my friend over here says there's no audio. Sorry about that. All right. Thank you for letting me know that there is no audio going on on YouTube. Now there should be audio over here on YouTube and uh, welcome everybody in on YouTube and everyone here on Instagram. We're gonna keep going. Just to recap for everyone on YouTube though, we're answering the question, what is alignment and is it actually important? So alignment is how your bones line up in your joints, just to recap. And then we've got muscle and we've got tissue that surrounds the joint, soft tissue. We have ligaments that surround the joint. Ligaments hold bones in place. And then we've got muscles that move bones. So everyone got that so far? We've got like this idea of um, ligaments that hold the bones in the sockets. And then we've got muscles that move our bones within the sockets. Now how, what our patterns are, what our muscular patterns are, meaning our tension, our tightnesses, our flexibilities, and our ability to engage a muscle or to disengage a muscle. That's the two things we can do with the muscle, by the way. Engage it and disengage it. Assessing our patterns 
of being able to engage or disengage our muscle is the step number one to healing the physical body in terms of the muscular system and the joints and whatnot. And also in terms of what we can do, there's certain things that we cannot do that we don't have control of. The muscular system is something that we have control of, uh, provided that it's uh, attached to the bones. You know, if you've severed a muscle away from a bone, we would call that a full tear of a muscle, then that's something you do need like a surgical procedure for to reattach to the bone. However, if you've got muscles attached to bones, a lot of times, the patterns that we have within those muscles, our tensions, our tightnesses, our, uh, our ability to contract or to relax, can cause the bones to go out of an alignment that is optimal. Now, optimal is an interesting word because our joints have a big range of motion that is available where things, you know, where our bones are happy. So you can do, for example, warrior two, like 10 different ways, let me rephrase, a thousand different ways and it can be really healing for you, whereas um, you can do it one way that could be very damaging for you. So there are multiple alignments. Let me start there. Alignment is a, a very tricky topic. People think that there's a right and a wrong way of doing yoga poses that is absolutely false. There is typically like one way or two ways that you should really avoid doing yoga postures. For example, in downward facing dog. Um, when you're, ever your arms are overhead, if you drop your shoulders down away, uh, especially aggressively, a lot of teachers are asking shoulders away from the ears when the arms are overhead. This is one way not to do a pose because that causes shoulder impingement. But that's one way. But the range of availability of lifting your shoulder up, there's so many uh, variants where you don't, where you actually avoid the uh, impingement interval and can really get a lot out of it. That said, Changing your muscle behavior, your patterning within your muscular system can be very healing. So step one is to become self-aware. And this can be applied to anything, but we're talking about the muscular system. So assess what are my muscle patterns? Where are my tensions? What is tight? What, where are my weaknesses? Where is it hard for me to engage? This is so important. Then you can get a little bit more uh, as you go along, um, uh, let's say this, a little more um, nuanced in finding out what muscles are short and what muscles are long because we all have muscles that have been lengthened over time that adapt to the situation and stay long. Whereas other times we have these muscles that are what, what can be called locked short. So if you drop your shoulder forward and down for all your life, the muscle called the pectoral minor is gonna be locked short and opening that using the strength of your rhomboids is gonna be very hard. So that's a new pattern that you can develop that's going to create health in the system. So what creates health in the muscular system? More often than not, it's a rule of thumb, it's not a definite, it's not a, this is the only way, but more often than not, it's finding out what your patterns are and then doing the opposite. So if you find a weak muscle, that's a pattern, doing the opposite would be to strengthen that muscle. If you find a tight muscle, doing the opposite would be to relax that muscle. Notice I didn't say stretch, relax the tight muscle, eventually you can stretch, okay? A lot of people uh, target a tight muscle and then go in there with force, trying to stretch it, like rip it open, and what happens? Of course, that muscle gets really angry with us, it tears, it gets pissed off, and so, you know, so so far it becomes a, a problem, okay. I'm gonna take a brief moment to just look at the comments I saw. Uh, will you do a 50-hour anatomy and alignment yoga TT uh, certification online soon? So, my friend yoga.cologne, thank you for the question. We have, um, on my website, I have something called the physical. It's a part of the 300 hour teacher training. You could take it separately, but it, what it teaches you is anatomy, alignment. It teaches you technique. Technique's a powerful word because that's not just how you arrange your bones. It's how you activate your muscles within the arrangement of your bones. So you could have uh, five different alignments, let's say for warrior two, with different pelvic tilts, with different rotations of the thigh bones, and you can activate different muscles within that same warrior two. You can activate your inner thighs by squeezing your legs toward each other in warrior two, which would be a different sensational experience and a completely different energetic experience than if you focused on pushing your feet away from one another in warrior two, okay? So 
technique is applying muscle engagements within alignments. That's something a lot of people pin me as an alignment teacher and I like to say I'm a technique teacher because I focus a lot more on uh, the, all the myriad of alignments and all of the possible techniques, muscle engagements within those alignments, okay? So am I offering a training? The 300 hour training has four parts Part one is called the physical, and you can take that separately if you don't want to do a full 300-hour training. The physical is on all things physical. We go through a, a, a whole load of postures, and I break them down as to what's required flexibility-wise, what's required strength-wise, what to avoid, uh, what happens if you have an injury, how do you do it. So the physical is available on theyogimat.com, and if you click on 300 hour, you'll see that there are four modules within the 300 hour. I suggest taking the full training, but if you just want anatomy, technique, biomechanics, then take, scroll to the bottom, you'll see the physical, you can take that separately. Again, the 300 hour starts February 14th for those of you that want that. Um, it's a very in-depth training. I teach you not only the alignment and uh, techniques of different postures, but also um, the, uh, we go, we actually go deep into anatomy and we study the muscles and so on and so forth. Um, that's a powerful training. It's very in-depth. I highly recommend it, um, but I also recommend doing the full 300-hour. If you if you really want to commit and advance your level of teaching, go for the 300-hour training. If you just want something specific, then yes, the physical, go for it. But one note about that is I really, if you're a yoga teacher, do the physical and chromatic one at the least because the physical teaches you all the techniques, advances it within your body, it advances your mind, meaning you'll understand it intellectually, but chromatic teaches you how to apply it to teaching a yoga class. Okay, so anybody can take the physical, whether you're a teacher or not, um, but regarding um, if you are a teacher, you wanna do at least the physical and chromatic so that you get the full spectrum of how to apply these techniques to teaching a yoga class. All right, let's get back to alignment. Does it really matter? And um, of course, you know, how, how do you start? So step one, I said, you must develop an understanding, awareness of your physical body. That is figuring out what's tight, figuring out what is long, figuring out what is weak, and then doing the opposite is step two. So if you find a weak muscle, most people would avoid that because what happens Raise your hand if this is you, just courageously, you know, and, and just acknowledge that this is something that we all do. If we find a weak muscle, we tend to avoid it because, and we'll say that the other side is our, uh, our good side, you know, and then we do everything on our good side, which will be our strong and our flexible side, depending on what pose. If the pose requires flexibility, we'll say that that side that is flexible is our good side. If the pose requires strength, that side that is strong is our good side. Now. I always, when I'm teaching yoga, if I'm gonna do a demonstration, I always demonstrate on my quote unquote bad side. That is, I strengthen my weak side and I stretch my uh, tight side or I lengthen my tight side. That's my goal is to create balance in my, my system by doing the opposite of what my patterns are. Okay, so that's not the same as doing an even amount of uh, breaths on the right side of warrior two as an even amount of breaths on the left side of warrior two because I, if I want to create balance in my system, I'm not necessarily going to just do everything evenly because what I acknowledge is that my body is not even right now. If it's not even, then if I just continue to even evenly work it, then my strong, my strengths will become my strengths they'll infinitely increase and my weaknesses will stay my weaknesses and my tightnesses will stay my tightnesses. My overstretched muscles will continue to be stretched, overstretched. Okay, so I hope I've um, clarified some of this. Step one, become aware. Step two, do the opposite of whatever your patterns are. So forget about alignment as, a, as like the, the main goal, but rather awareness of my muscular system and creating balance within it that will directly affect your alignment because your muscles around your joints are like a pulley system. If you have, let's say, the muscles on the outside of your hip are really tight, really strong, and also really tight, let's just say, and the muscles of your inner thigh are weak and long, then what happens is your thigh bone, instead of sitting evenly in the hip socket, will now pull to the outside of the hip socket and knock against the outer hip, limiting range of motion and also causing a lot of pain and potential damage to the hip joint itself. So instead of, um, 
you know, thinking like, okay, if I just align my warrior two in a certain way, you have to activate and strengthen the adductors, the inner thighs, if that were the case, and lengthen the outer hips, if this were you, okay? So it's about assessing what is and then balancing out what is. I hope I've made myself clear. This is super important. I've got a question over on Instagram. I'm gonna check it out and see what we've got. Um, I had my YTT in English and difficult to guide a yoga class in my mother language, which is Greek. Any suggestions? Yeah, sure. I have great suggestions on how to um, you know, guide your yoga class in, in any language, and that is memorize your verbal cues. This is something we teach very, uh, uh, very, um, let's say I'm very adamant about this in the 200 hour training is, and, and the 300 hour training that I offer online, that you memorize your verbal cues. A lot of people get uh, weird about memorization because they wanna be creative on the spot. When I go to another country, I take, a, I take classes in that language and I listen, I listen, I listen. And when I find a cue that I like, even if I don't understand the language, I ask the teacher what that cue meant and then I write it down and I repeat it, I memorize it, and once I memorize it, then I start saying it. And then once I start saying it, at first it feels very awkward, I can't pronounce it, or if you're talking about switching to your native tongue, so that's you'll be fine with pronunciation. But you have to get into the rhythm of saying it enough times until it feels like you, until it is authentically you. At first, you're just copying someone else, okay, and it's gonna feel weird, but then if you say it enough times, you will come through in saying that. So no matter what, make sure that you are, uh, my, my suggestion is you memorize verbal cues no matter what language that you are trying to do it, whether it's your language or anybody else's language, whatever it is, memorize the cues. I did this for English. I wrote down the cues that I loved from my teachers for, for years. I assisted my teachers, just sat in their classes sometimes, and I would just have a notebook and write down for years the cues that I loved. I would I memorize them, memorize them, memorize them, and then I had a vocabulary to speak within a yoga class. Then over time, yes, you might interject different words, uh, colorful ways of saying things, but you need to have a vocabulary first, and that starts with memorization. Um, so if you suck at memorization like I do, repeat, 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 repeat until you feel so comfortable that it's you, and then when you get up and you speak, it'll just come out. It won't necessarily be something that is um, you know, like a, a chore. Okay, so, um, Yes, the creativity is something that can only happen. Let me add one more thing, okay? In case we've got some musicians and artists in the house. Um, if you've ever played the guitar, piano, or, or singing or whatever, your creativity is limited to your ability to uh, your proficiency on whatever instrument it is that you're playing. So while you can be masterfully creative on the guitar and play all sorts of things, if you wanna play within the confines of guitar, then you have to know the chords, you have to know how to move your fingers, you have to develop the strength of your musculature, you have to understand the scales, and then over time, once you understand these things, your creativity can flow within that instrument. Now, yes, of course, you can change the way the guitar is played, the way that you know some guitarists get really creative and go out on a limb and, and uh, you know, we'll, we'll play the guitar by uh, using drumsticks and all that stuff. That's another way, but you still have to learn that methodology. You still have to learn the techniques required to do it that way. If you're gonna play piano, you gotta learn the chords, the, the scales. If you're gonna learn vo vocal, if you wanna uh, sing, your voice has to develop the strength in order to move, where you place your vocal tone, uh, meaning towards the front or towards the middle, to the back of the throat. Okay, so there's different techniques for anything that you do in order to be creative, you've got to master those things first. All right, we're going off on a little bit of a tangent. The original question, what is alignment and is it important? Um, and, and ultimately, how do you create health in your physical body? That's something that people want to know. So I, I do want to touch upon those of you that don't necessarily love alignment classes, right? Because maybe it's a lot of discipline. It, it feels rigid, like, uh, please raise your hand if that's you, if you feel like, I don't like alignment classes because I always feel like I have to, you know, um, like I'm, I'm in the military, like I always have to do something and I just wanna feel good, I wanna flow, I wanna move. 
Um, I just want to touch on one thing about that. There's nothing wrong with movement, with flow, with uh, which, by the way, we're going to be doing the month of February. We're going to be doing flow movement uh, transitions between postures. That's going to be the live immersion, theyogimat.com slash live. It, uh, it's not available yet for sale if you're watching this for live, but if you're watching this afterwards, it probably is available for sale. Um, now, I want to say that there's nothing wrong with that. However, Treat that like a performance. It's like it, you're moving, if you're moving without necessarily changing the way that you move, then that's more performing. And that's cool, performance is very good. Um, I'm a performer, so I'm not, I'm not, not knocking on it. But in order for it to be a practice, it needs to be that you're working on something that you don't have mastered yet. Now, when we flow, when we move, we're usually doing all of the things that we already have mastered, meaning the same muscles that we are uh, already strong with are gonna be the first ones to activate. The muscles that are tight are gonna stay tight. We're gonna be falling into our muscular patterns unless, of course, you're able to move so mindfully and so slow or at least so you have such a, um, a connection to your physical body that you can activate muscles, different muscles through your movement while moving, while breathing, while listening to the teacher. And this is very hard, but it is very advanced. Most people that are flowing don't necessarily have that skill. I find it very challenging after many, many years. Like I could say my wife, who's a, a professional dancer and spent her entire life since she was three learning how to mindfully move. That's her course that she teaches. Um, she certainly can listen to me uh, tra tell her transitions through postures and she can slow down that within her own thought process and ask her muscles to engage properly, right? But that's a very advanced skill. So there's nothing wrong with flow. Just know that all the time is not good because you want to be changing something about your muscular uh, system. You want to be doing something that's opposite of your strengths. And again, I touched on this a little bit before. We usually, when we find a weakness, it feels... Um, we feel diminished by that weakness and we don't wanna see it, we avoid it. This happens in the mind, it happens in the body. And I wanna just make sure that you know that it's a good thing to work on those weaknesses. It's to have the courage not to see like, oh, I'm, I'm weak, but to see that there's an opportunity here to get stronger. What's up, Joao? Nice to see you, John Rock G. <laughs> um, thank you for being here, everybody. It's nice to share this information with you. Um, I just want to kind of close this out um, and just kind of close us out with just a, a recap of understanding. I know it takes uh, this a lot of information about the physical body and the anatomy of it. And um, those of you over here on YouTube, I apologize. The beginning of the video was cut, um, cut out. I hope that you've got enough of it in order to really integrate this into um, at least your practice. And that is the major message that I'm sharing with you when, when talking about alignment is not that there's a correct and an incorrect way of holding your bones or holding a yoga posture for that matter. But rather, there is multiple ways of holding a yoga posture and there is multiple good ways of doing a posture like warrior two or side angle pose. There's multiple ways of doing that of any posture that is good. There are a few that are not good and they're very few. And those are the ones you'll hear me kind of say from a marketing standpoint, like don't, Lift your, don't drop your shoulders in down dog or handstand. Actually elevate them towards your ears, okay? That's like one, but there's so many different things that you could do that actually are good for you within, uh, you know, down, uh, within down dog or handstand. There's multiple alignments and multiple muscle engagements. So we call, mu I call muscle engagements within different alignments techniques to give you greater access to postures and ultimately to feel better on a daily basis. So we wanna become aware, step one, of our physical body and our patterns. Step two is to balance out. That means find our weaknesses and make them strengths. That takes work, it takes courage to uh, address what you know ultimately might make you feel diminished and say, you know what? This is an opportunity for me to get stronger and build. Instead of harping on my strengths, I'm gonna actually build upon my weaknesses to make them my strengths, right? And then that's an ever uh, ongoing flow, an ongoing uh, conversation with your body that you can have, okay? That's really the, the major two steps. 
And then there's a lot of nuances that we can get into, but I think that's a good starting point for everybody from this conversation. And I wanna say uh, thank you again for everyone that's watched, that has tuned in, I really appreciate it. And I wanna also just mention, if you're interested in practicing with me, I do live stream immersions every month. You can sign up at the beginning of the month and you get a discounted rate if you sign up before the month begins. So uh, it's $98 US dollars. And what that gets you is 12 yoga classes. So it works out to less than $10 per you know yoga class. I don't know whether it's like $8 or whatever it might be. And you get lifetime access to all of these classes. So those 12 classes, while you watch them live, you can watch them forever afterwards and really get a good handle on them. Um, that way they're the gift that keep on giving. Um, also the 200 hour online training starts February 1st. We're in 2021 right now. If you're watching this afterwards, uh, you check with me and check my website theyogimat.com. You can click on the 200 or the 300 hour training and see what the dates are. February 1st is the 200 hour. February 14th, the 300 hour online begins. And that is for yoga teachers that are already certified that want to get to the 500 hour master teacher level um, and then develop uh, the, the skill set to be able to communicate anatomy, alignment techniques, but also interject the heart aspects of the yoga practice, not just the technical, but more the heartfelt reasons why we step in, that, that part that makes us feel good about the yoga practice. So it's not just technical. I'm talking about that right now. It's a big part of the 300 hour training. So um, I wanna make sure that you understand that there's at least half of it is really dedicated to that. Uh, the other half is dedicated to meditation techniques and pranayama, the other, the other rich aspects of finding more alignment with the mind. And so uh, there's my dog and he's barking now. My wife is home. So I'm gonna take off and it's just been a pleasure to share with you. Thank you all so very much for tuning in. And I look forward to sharing more with you soon. Take care of yourselves and bye-bye.